If you've built a game for iOS or Android using Unity, I'd love to see it on my TV. And you can do so by using the Google Cast Remote Display plugin for Unity. We've put together an Android code lab showing you how to do so. So let's take a look. OK, let's get started with adding cast support to an existing game in Unity. First thing we do is we open an existing project. We'll open this project that we've called Begin Project, and it will fire up inside the Unity IDE. Now that we're actually inside the IDE, we could try playing this project as is by pressing the play button. Now we see the game running and we can explore our world, fire, do all sorts of stuff and hopefully not get killed. Now that we know the game is working, we can start by adding support for the Android SDK inside Unity. To set up the Android SDK inside Unity, first you need to tell it where it is. So you go to Preferences, External Tools, look for the Android SDK line, choose Browse, and locate the position on your hard disk where you've actually installed the Android SDK. In this case, it's right here. So I click Choose, and now Unity is ready to work with the Android SDK. Next, we need to configure the Android player so that Unity will build for Android. What we do is we click the File menu, choose Build Settings, then look for Android in the list, select it if it's not already selected, and click Switch Platform to make it the default build target. While that happens, it will start importing the assets and getting ready to build an Android application. Right, after we've imported everything for Android, we now need to configure the bundle identifier. If you come over here to the Player Settings button, if you click that, you'll see over here in the inspector, we have the Player Settings. If we click on Other Settings, it brings up a whole lot of options. First thing we do is we change the bundle identifier. So for our example, we'll just set it to something like example.game. We also need to change the minimum API version because the cast plugin requires Android KitKat 4.4 or higher, so we choose 4.4 KitKat. Now that we've configured everything, we can just close the build settings dialog. And if we save our project by going File, Save Project, we can then go File, Build and Run. What we should do at this point in time is actually collect, connect an Android device. So we'll plug it in, click Build and Run, and hopefully build our application to run on our phone. And we'll call the project Game. Now while we wait for that to build, we'll get on to the next thing, which is actually playing the game to see how it works. Now we have our game running on the phone, so swipe from the top to get the home screen and quit the game. Next we'll get on to cast enabling the game itself. To begin development of your cast enabled game, you need to go to the cast developer console. On the console, you can add new applications that will run on the cast device and register devices for debugging. So we'll click Add New Application and choose the Remote Display Receiver Type. This will receive the content from your phone. So we'll call it My Game. Once you click Save, you'll be issued an application ID that you can see here. You'll use that in your project. The other thing we need to do is register a debugging device. If I click the Add New Device button, Whilst this dialog is up, I can click the cast extension in Chrome, which will show me cast devices that are available. If you don't have the extension, you can get it from the Chrome Web Store. If I click on that device, it will show the serial number and read it out to me, so I can enter the serial number into my dialog box here. So the serial number that it's read to me for this particular example, I'll just type in and give it a name. We'll call it Playroom. OK, now when we click OK, what you'll see is a registering dialog. Now this status here, registering, takes approximately 15 minutes to complete. So this is a good time to go and get a cup of coffee and come back. After your device is registered for development, you'll see this ready for testing status in the Cast Developer Console. At this point, you should reboot your Cast device and we'll get ready to set up the Google Cast plugin. 
Now that we've set up our device for testing, we need to download the Google Cast Remote Display plugin from the Unity Asset Store. Once we've downloaded it, we can go back into Unity, choose Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then select the plugin and click Open. This will bring up an Import Package dialog. Here we click the Import button to bring all the assets into our project. After the plugin has finished loading all the assets, you should be able to go down here to the Plugins folder and check that you have all the folders for the Google Cast Remote Display plugin available to you. Note, at this point we need to copy three of the Android SDK libraries into the Plugins folder. That's the Google Play Services Library, the App Compact Library and the Media Router Library. Now that we've set up the plugin, we need to go to the Android directory and open the android.manifest.xml file. You'll see it over here in the inspector. Now, if we bring it up in our editor, we need to change the package name to be the same as what we set up in Unity. So we set it as example.game and save the manifest file. The next thing we need to do is add an audio listener to our project so that we can send audio to the cast device. We go up to the assets menu, choose assets, create, C sharp script, and then we'll rename that to be Audio Listener Singleton. Now we open that file up in a text editor, and we can actually change the code, code to implement the Audio Listener for us. The example is in the code lab, referenced from this video. Next, we need to add the Audio Listener to the scene. But to do that, we go to Game Object, create an empty game object. We can rename that to be our audio listener singleton. And if we navigate down into our plugins folder where the Google Cast Remote Display plugin is, you'll see the audio listener inside there. So we'll select it and we drag it and drop it onto our audio listener singleton. You'll notice that the display on the right here in the inspector has changed to show the script we just added. Meanwhile, we need to add the script we created in the previous step. So we go back into the Android folder where we had created that script find our audio listener singleton and drag it on as well. You'll see the second script appear in the right hand inspector. Now what we need to do is actually add the remote display to the scene and we'll be all done. Now let's add remote display to the Unity scene. What we need to do is go to the Google Cast Remote Display folder here and find this prefab called Google Remote Display Manager and drag it into our scene hierarchy at the top level. If we then select it and go over to the right, we need to set a few things. First thing we set is the audio manager. We want to set it to the audio listener singleton we created in the previous step so that we can send audio to the device. Next we need to create a camera. After you've added the cast remote display manager to your project, you need to set the app ID so that the cast device knows which app to load, which is over here in the inspector. So what we do is we go back to our Cast SDK Developer Console, grab that ID, and copy it. Once we've copied the ID, we can put it into Unity so now we know the cast device knows which application to load. Next, we'll add the mobile camera. To create the camera, we choose Game Object, Camera. This is the camera that will show the image on the mobile phone when casting, so we'll call it the mobile camera. Now, if we select the mobile camera, we need to remove the audio listener over here because it can interfere with our audio routing to the cast device, so we remove the component. We also need to remove it from the main camera, so we go across here to the audio listener and get rid of it. Now that we've created the cameras, we need to wire in a script that will control them. To prepare the script to control the camera, we go to the file system and go to End Project, Assets, Scripts, Camera, and find the remote camera manager.cs script file. 
We'll take that and we'll copy it over into our project. So if we drop it in there, we have the script for the mobile camera, which provides the view for the mobile device during casting, and the main camera, which is shown on the cast device. Now that we've copied the script, we can go back to Unity and set it up for use. If we go into the scripts camera folder, you'll see the remote camera manager there. We just grab it and drag it onto our mobile camera. Then if we look at the mobile camera in our inspector, we can see the script enabled. We need to change a few settings here. Change the display manager to be the cast remote display manager. We'll also set the remote display camera to be the mobile camera that we just built. And then of course the main camera will be the main camera. So now we've set up all our cameras, we're ready to go. All we need to do is add some kind of UI to allow casting to happen. To set up a simple UI to start casting from our phone to the display, we go back into the Google Cast Remote Display Plugins folder and find the Cast Default UI, which is a prefab that provides a cast UI. We drag that into the top level of our hierarchy and that will give us a nice UI. And we're ready to go. All we need to do now is choose File, Build and Run and watch it run on our phone. So we've built our game and lo and behold it has a cast icon which lets us send the gameplay to any Google Cast enabled device. For more details go to the code lab which explains how to make the cast icon transparent, change colours and add controls to move your player around the game so it actually does something. I hope you enjoyed a quick tour through how to make your game Google Cast enabled.